right before we jump into this video, if you want to take better photos, I created a free mini video course called 11 Days to Better Photography, which you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is your user's guide for the Canon Rebel T7i. Now I know some of this stuff may be basic, but that will help a lot of you out there who are just getting your first camera. But feel free to skip ahead if you wanna get to some of the other things that I'll be talking about in the video. But the first thing I wanna do is walk you through the outside of the camera so you understand what each of the buttons do. Now the first thing that I wanna show you is where the battery goes. So here is the battery. Flip this switch right here, put the battery in just like this, press it in, you click it, shut the door, and you're good to go. Now the next thing is your memory card. That goes right here on the side. Just press, let it flip open. Actually, you actually have to flip it open. I have my memory card right here. You can see the notch corner right there. You put it in just like this, boom, shut the door, and your memory card is in there. Now the SD card can only go in there one way. If it's not going in, don't force it. Never force anything into the camera. So right here on the top, we've got the on off switch as well as getting into video mode. This is something new in this camera or in most of Canon's cameras. Off right here, that turns it on. To get into video mode, you would then switch it into video mode right there. So I'm gonna leave it off while we go through this. This is your mode dial. When you get it, it's probably gonna be in the green mode, which is full auto. Full auto means the camera's gonna do everything for you and try to get you the best exposures possible for whatever situation that you're in. As you get more advanced, that's when you switch into the other modes, which I'll tell you about in just a second. Moving around the dial, this is the full auto, but without flash. How many times have you been in a situation where they're like, don't use the flash, and you didn't know how to turn it off? Well, well, in this case, you can leave it in full auto and still have it not use the flash by going into this mode. Next, we move into what they call CA. That's creative auto. It's a creative mode. You can look at that on the back of the screen. I personally don't use these auto modes myself. Then you have portrait mode followed by landscape mode, followed by what they call close up. It can't be called macro because macro is dependent on the lens that you're using. Then we move to the running man mode. You would use that if you are shooting sports. I personally lived in running man mode the first four or five years of my shooting career because I shot a lot of sports. Then we have scene modes, things like shooting food or night portraits or night with the flash or handheld at night. There's a lot of different scene modes that are in there that will help you get hopefully better pictures. Now moving on, this is creative filters. There's a lot of different things. You know, when you take Instagram pictures, it's kind of similar to what you would do in this creative filters mode. Personally, don't use those. But now we get into full manual mode. In order to unlock the full capability of the camera and all of the menu settings, you have to go into the manual modes. Manual means that you're gonna control everything yourself in terms of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. The camera's still gonna do autofocus. It doesn't mean when you go into manual that, that the camera's gonna manually focus. This is just more for your settings. AV is aperture priority and TV is shutter priority. AV means that you set the aperture and the camera's gonna set everything else. When you get into TV, it's not like you're turning on the TV, though that would be pretty cool. It's actually going to allow you to set the shutter speed to what you want it to be, and the camera's gonna compensate for the right exposure for everything else. And P is basically full auto, though it still gives you all of the settings in the menu. So if you wanna try and get all of those settings, you can go from full auto into the P mode. So that's the outside of the dial. Now what I wanna show you right here is how to put the lens on and how to take the lens off. In this case, I hold it in my left hand. I'm gonna press this button right here, which is the lens release button. And then you see this red dot? I'm gonna turn it towards me and I take it off. Now how do we put it back on? So you take the red dot right here on the lens and you line it up with the red dot on the mount, just like this. Turn it away till you hear the click 
and your lens is now on the camera. Make sure you don't touch the mirror inside. Something that I hear a lot from people is that, oh, there was dust in my viewfinder and I tried to clean the mirror. Just know that will never affect your images. It will be a pain in the butt to look at, but that's not going to affect your images. So just don't touch the mirror or try to flip it out of the way or touch the shutter that's behind it. So let's look at some of the buttons around the top of the camera. This right here is your shutter release button. You press this halfway down to get your autofocus and you press it fully to take a picture. This right here is what you use to change your shutter speed. And then in order to change the aperture, which a lot of people say, I'm gonna quickly flip around to the back of the camera, there's this AV plus minus button. You can press that and that's gonna tell the camera when you're in the manual modes to allow you to change the aperture by pressing this button and holding it in and turning the top dial just like this. I'll show you that in action later on in the video. This is your display button that turns the display on and off. This is your ISO button for setting your ISO. And this one is to select the focus mode that you wanna be in. It allows you to select multiple focus points or one focus point. You'll see that in action a little later on. Now flipping around to the back of the camera, right here, you've got your live view button. You will press this to get into live view when the the camera is on. But now when you're in video mode and the on off switch is switched all the way to the video side, you will press this to start and stop the recording of your video. We already talked about the AV. You've got your Q button, which is your quick menu button that allows you to quickly get to different menus inside the camera. You've got your Wi-Fi button to set up Wi-Fi control white balance to change white balance, AF to change your autofocus modes. Down here is your picture style. Right here is how you can change how many frames a second you're gonna shoot. And then you've got your set button right in the middle, which is basically enter or okay. Down here on the bottom, you have your play button for playing back your video or your stills, as well as the trash can button for deleting photos that you don't want to use or video that you wanna delete. I highly recommend you don't delete anything inside the camera just in case you delete something that you actually wanted because maybe it looked not so good on the screen but it would look better in the computer. So try not to get into the habit of deleting things on the camera, especially with the size of memory cards today being so large. Up here at the top, you've got a checkerboard, which is when you're reviewing your images, you can zoom out by hitting the checkerboard or you can zoom in with the button right here. This right here is your diopter. If you wear glasses or you need to correct your vision, you can look through the camera, focus on something, make sure the camera beeps so you know that it's in focus, and then turn the diopter until it's clear for you when you're shooting, especially if you wear glasses. This is your viewfinder right here. This is where your three inch touch screen is. Now it's protected when it's closed, so if you're putting it in a bag and you're traveling, then close it like this so that it's protected. So you can rotate it out like this, you can see that it rotates this way. It also rotates this way. Don't force it to go further than it wants to go because you will break it. Uh, then you can just close it down like this and now you have a touch screen that is exposed. These are built very well these days. You don't wanna scratch it with your keys though it should hold up pretty well. But if you're worried that it's going to break just close it when you're not using it and you should be good to go. Info button shows you info on the back of the screen. Your menu button allows you to get into the different menus in your camera. Now flipping it underneath, this is your tripod socket. This is where you would connect it to a tripod or a monopod or to a strap if your strap has something that plugs into this part of the camera. Now right here on the side of the camera, you've got some inputs. This is where your remote input would go. You would plug in the remote in the top and in the bottom is where you would put the microphone. If you're doing recording of video with an external mic, that's where it would plug in. Now right here, you have your USB as well as an HDMI port right here in case you wanna play it back on a TV. You could do that as well or transfer files from the USB cable to your computer. I do recommend you pick up a card reader. It's much easier than leaving this sitting on the desk. Moving around to the front, we already showed you the release button for the lens. You have the flash button that will pop up the flash, except for if you're in the don't use the flash mode. And right down here, this little button is a depth of field preview button. Let's see, anything else on the camera? Yep. 
This little light right here that you may be able to see, this is an autofocus assist light. I personally turn that off because it gets bright or it just blinks in people's eyes. Not that it's going to affect their eyes. They're just gonna know you're taking a picture. Uh, so I kind of turn that one off. It does help though in low light situations. So what else do we have? Well, we have the hot shoe. This is the hot shoe. This is where you would put a flash if you wanted to use a extra flash or you could put a microphone right here that would just slide in, attach right here, plug it into the side and you're good to go. And hiding right under here is your flash. So let me go ahead and pop that up for you by hitting the flash button. That pops up and that's where that happens. Let me show you again, boom. And there you have it. That's pretty much it for the outside of the camera. I know it takes a little bit of time to go through that, but just learn it once. And now let's move on to the next section. Right before we jump into the next section, I wanna let you know that I have over 2,500 free videos right here on YouTube. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and check the back catalog for a ton of videos that will help you become a better photographer. So now let's go through the menu system and I'm gonna show you how I personally would set it up if I was using it. Now I wanna remind you that I'm actually going into the manual mode because that's gonna unlock all of the menu systems that I wanna get access to. If you were in the auto modes, it wouldn't give you access to all of those. I also wanna let you know that you see that I'm plugged into HDMI right here because I am recording the back of the camera right here so that you guys can see it cleanly as I go through it. And that's why we're using this Atomos. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit menu and that's gonna take me to this screen that is going to show you a new setup. This is new just in this Canon camera and you will see that you can turn this off later, but in order to get to the regular menu, you can go ahead and hit the set button or touch okay on the screen. In this case, I don't have touch capability because I'm using an external monitor. So the first thing that you see here is image quality. This is where you're going to select the quality of the image. Now you could just touch the screen or in this case, I'm gonna hit the set button and you see large and it's gonna tell you how many pictures you can actually get on the memory card that you're using. This is large, this is slightly smaller large, which is an oxymoron, but then you've got medium, smaller medium, small one, smaller, smaller one. You have S2, which is smaller, smaller. I don't use that either. And then you have RAW plus JPEG large. I personally shoot RAW. That's why you see it on my shirt and on my wristbands and also on my underwear, but I'll spare you that. I won't show you that. Now, why would you use RAW and JPEG? So for those who don't know that these cameras shoot in RAW and JPEG, JPEG is a compressed file. What it's doing is it's taking the picture. The camera's gonna make all the decisions for you in terms of uh, sharpness and tone and white balance, and it's going to compress that and throw out data that it doesn't think that you need. Now the RAW file on the other hand is a much larger file, but every time you take a RAW file, you have to edit that RAW file in the computer later. Yes, it does take a little bit more work, but it gives you a much better quality file to work with later. For example, if you totally botched your exposure, you have a better chance of bringing it back with the RAW file than you do with a JPEG. Now, when you're just starting out, even though it says I shoot RAW and everything I do is I shoot RAW, I do recommend that you shoot at least RAW plus JPEG. If you just wanna shoot JPEG because that's what you wanna do, then that's fine, you can do whatever you want, but my recommendation is you shoot RAW plus JPEG and you save those RAW files for the future, for when you understand how to edit them in Lightroom or whatever editing software that you're using because you have more control over it, it will be much better to have those files later on. I know that's long-winded, but this is a big discussion topic that people have. When I first started, I didn't know if should I shoot RAW, should I shoot JPEG, and Luckily, I shot both at the beginning because those RAW files that I shot 12 years ago, I can still open them today and get back to the original file and pull out all the detail I'm looking for. So in this case, let's just go with RAW plus JPEG large. Image review, this means how long the image, oh, look at that, it pops up on the screen and it says, choose how long the images are displayed on the LCD monitor after you shoot them. Personally, I turn this off. 
The reason I turn this off is I don't like shooting a picture and then having the LCD turn on for me to look at the image because a lot of times I'm not gonna stop taking pictures to make sure I got a good picture. I'm gonna wait till there's a lull in whatever I'm shooting to do a review and especially when you're shooting at night and it's darker and that LCD comes on, it's gonna make it harder to see through the viewfinder because of all of that glare. So I personally leave that off. Next up, we have release shutter without card. Currently it's on, which means if you don't have a card in the camera, it's going to allow you to take a picture, which is kind of dumb because you have nothing to save the picture to. So I highly recommend that you go in here by hitting the set button or touching it and going down to disable so you can disable that. Next up, we have lens aberration correction. Correct the effect of the lens optical characteristics on images. Uh, I don't even touch this. I don't worry about it, especially when you're shooting raw files. That's not going to affect the image. Next up, we have lens electronics manual focus. What it means is that it takes effect with lenses that have electronic focusing rings, which are a lot of the lenses that Canon offers. So moving on, you could do two things to get to the next menu. You could turn this top dial or you could hit the right arrow just like this. Uh, exposure compensation, I leave it set right to where it's set. Flash control, I don't go into there. Reduce red eye reduction, I leave that on disabled. So moving on, we have ISO speed. Now, you do have this option to change ISO on the outside of the camera, but if you wanna change it from the menu system, just highlight it, hit the set button or touch it on the screen, and you can rotate through by using the arrows to go to auto. If you go to auto, that means ISO is gonna automatically be selected from the camera. I personally don't shoot with auto ISO because I don't like when the camera goes to too high of an ISO and ends up giving me a more grainy image. I want to have full control myself. But when you're first starting out, it's okay if you want to start there. Just know that you're not going to live there forever. So you can change from 100 all the way up to 25,600. I'm going to go ahead and hit set, but I'm going to leave it back to 800. Uh, ISO auto, this is interesting. If you're gonna shoot ISO auto, you can set it to max at a high of 6,400 or 12,800 if you don't want it to go past a certain ISO. So in this case, I would probably set it to 12,800 if I were you. Uh, auto lighting optimization, this says autocorrect image brightness and contrast. Uh-uh, I leave this on disabled. This isn't something that I personally wanna use and this is also only going to affect your JPEG. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that off. Moving on to menu three. Let's see what we have here. Metering mode. This is also something you can change on the outside of the camera. You've got evaluative metering, which is gonna take a reading of the brightest area and the darkest area to give you the exposure right in the middle. It works most of the time. Uh, if you wanna get into partial metering, I personally don't use partial metering. If I was to use anything, I would end up using spot metering. Spot metering comes into play if somebody's in front of a bright background, and you wanna just get a meter reading for that person's face and not the entire scene, then you would go ahead and go into spot metering and then center weighted average. I don't go into that either. I just leave it on evaluative metering. Color space, sRGB is fine. Picture style, auto is generally fine, but I'll go in here and show you. You've got auto, standard, portrait, landscape, fine details, neutral, faithful, Monochrome, monochrome means if you take a JPEG photo in just JPEG, it's only going to take it in black and white. You will never have color data. Now, if you do shoot it with RAW and JPEG and it shows up on the screen as just black and white, just know that the RAW file will still maintain that color data. I don't do that. I don't ever put it on monochrome. Now, if you were shooting video and you wanted it to be in monochrome, you would only be able to get monochrome if you shoot monochrome when it comes to video. And keep in mind that these picture styles only affect your JPEGs, not the RAW files, but they will also affect your video. If you had it set to monochrome and you weren't sure and you shot video, well, you would be sure because the screen would show you on the back that it's going to be black and white, but for whatever reason, if you shot it that way, you can't get the color back after that. So I generally tend to leave it in auto. It does a pretty good job. And then with the raw files, I can make all the corrections later. White balance, auto white balance is what I do as well. I don't worry about custom white space or white balance shift bracketing. That's a little too advanced even for me 
things you don't even need to worry about. Moving into number four, long exposure noise reduction. Currently it's off. I like to leave that off. And remember, it's only going to affect your JPEGs, not your RAW files. High ISO noise reduction. Right now I have it set to standard. And again, remember, if you have this set, it's only affecting your JPEGs. I kind of would turn this off because what happens in the high ISO noise reduction is it's going to smooth out your image more and take away some of that extra sharpness. Moving to the next one, dust delete data. I don't touch that either. It says obtain data for removing dust used alongside software. Just too complicated, skip it. Moving on to five, we've got anti-flicker shoot. This is interesting. Uh, right now it's on disabled. You could put it on enabled and it says, if enabled is set, the shutter release time lag may become longer or continuous shooting speeds may become slower, which means leave it disabled. So now I'm gonna hit menu again because we just went through the entire shooting menu and next up you have the playback settings. So I go ahead and hit okay, go over here to one, protect images, what this means, yep, nope, I'm not protecting any images, I'm gonna hit back, I'm hitting menu again. You can rotate the images, erase images, print order, photo book setup, creative filters, a lot of this stuff I would never even touch when I come into this menu. Uh, playback settings, you could do cropping, resizing, rating, slideshow, set image, look, most of this stuff you're never gonna touch. I know I'm jumping through it, but that's because I've never used it myself. So moving on to the next one, you have AF point display. This is actually pretty cool. If you enable this, it's going to show you the autofocus point when you're reviewing your image. So it's gonna have a red box where it was focused. I actually like having that because I like to see that the focus point was where it needed to be. Uh, so I put that on enabled. Histogram display brightness, choose the type of image histogram. You would have it either show you brightness or it could show you the RGB. Personally, what matters to me, if you're gonna use a histogram, is you look at brightness. I can show you the histogram when we review an image a little later. So that's pretty much it for playback. Moving into the menu, you've got your function settings. Things like select folder, I don't select the folder. File numbering, it's automatically set to continuous. This is good, I'm not a big fan of manual reset. I like it to be continuous, meaning if I took 100 photos during this photo shoot and I take the card out and I put another card in, the numbering sequence is gonna pick up at 101 and not start back to one. That's so you don't have duplicates in the computer if you put them all into the same folder. Auto rotate is on. I want that on so that it automatically rotates the picture for when it's in the computer. If you shot vertically or horizontally, do, does the rotation for you. Format memory card is a big deal. This is what you do when you first put a new card into the camera, you reformat it. So basically what you're doing is telling the camera and the card that it's okay to talk to each other. You're reformatting it, which totally wipes everything on the card. So before you reformat, you wanna make sure that you've saved all of the files that are currently on your card before you go ahead and reformat it. That's if you only use one card. I do recommend that you have multiple cards, but you should reformat before each photo shoot as long as you've backed up all of your files, hopefully to multiple places. Then you've got wireless communication settings. You can go into this to set up your Wi-Fi, to set up your, set up your uh, NFC, set nicknames. This is where you would get into your Wi-Fi settings. So going back into the menu, moving over to number two, uh, we've got auto power off. We currently have it disabled so that when we're showing you this on the screen, it doesn't turn off, but you should probably set that to about a minute or so to automatically turn it off. LCD brightness, some people will turn that on to the full brightness when they're shooting outside. I leave it right in the middle because I wanna have a good representation of understanding the settings to what I'm seeing on my screen. Meaning when I take a photo, I, wanna, I don't want it to be thrown off in my eyes when I look at it because it was either too bright or too dark and I'm compensating for that with my changes. So I leave that right in the middle. So moving on, we've got LCD off on button. Now right now we have it remaining on for the purposes of making this video, but if you were going to set it, I would have it set to shutter button so that the LCD goes off when you press the shutter button. So moving back into the menu, we've got date and time. That's where you would set your date and time. The language you want your camera to speak, meaning if you say camera speak, it actually won't speak. It's not like Alexa. Uh, so then you've got viewfinder display to show you different things like the electronic level. I have that on hide. 
grid display. I have that also on hide and flicker detect. You would see in the bottom corner, it would say flicker if it detects, say you're in a gym and they have those flickering lights. So moving back to the menu, moving to number three, we've got GPS device settings. That's if you have the adapter to allow you to do that. Moving on, video systems, NTSC or PAL, depending on where you are in the world. Touch control, I have that on standard. Standard's perfectly fine. Next up, you have beep. I currently have this enabled. Now, when you are in single shot, taking a photo where you get your autofocus locked, you will hear a beep when it's in focus. Now, if you're in a loud area, that's perfectly fine, but if you need to be quiet, you may wanna go ahead and put this to disable. I personally leave it on enabled, except for when I'm in a quiet situation. Battery info, this is gonna tell you how much battery life you have remaining. That's a nice option to see. Next up is sensor cleaning. Now, every time you turn the camera off, it's automatically set to do a sensor cleaning. Basically what's happening is it's shaking some kind of filter in front of the sensor, which is hopefully knocking the dust off there if there's any dust on there. But other than that, we'll move to number four. You have your custom functions, your clear settings, which I'm not doing, copyright information. You can go ahead and enter your name as well as copyright details, which is great to put your name, email address, phone number, and that's gonna be saved in the metadata of your file. That's a nice option to have. Manual software URL. Check the URL for downloading the instruction manual. Oh, okay. That's if you need an instruction manual, but who needs an instruction manual when you have me making your video right there? Certification logo display. This is funny, this is that FCC stuff, regulations. It's actually in the camera. I don't even know why. I mean, they have to do it for regulatory reasons, but you don't even need to know about that. And then this is where you would upgrade the firmware if you ever needed to update the firmware. Now let me go back into the menu. One last thing over here is custom information display for your ability or preferences. This is where you can change it from the guide view, which is gonna give you some animated pictures on the screen, to more of a standard view, which you would find in the higher end cameras. That's up to you to decide which one you would like to use. And that's pretty much the menu system and how I think you should set it. Now I know you have camera gear because you're watching this video, but I wanna ask you, how do you organize and protect it? Well, if you don't know, check out my free app called My Gear Vault. It's the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear so you know what you have and what it's worth. And again, it's absolutely free. You can download it at mygearvault.com. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you're actually shooting photos on the back of your screen and how you can make changes to the settings without going in to the menu. Now keep in mind, I'm recording this onto the Atomos so that you can see the menu here so you can sit there and practice at home with your camera. So here I'm in manual and you can see that I've got the shutter speed at the top, I've got the aperture and I also have the ISO right there. Now how do we change the shutter speed? I showed you this earlier. So you turn this dial right up here at the top with your forefinger and you can see that the shutter speed is going higher and the shutter speed is going lower. Now, if you hit the Q button, you could basically hit the arrows or slide across and it will change the shutter speed for you. Now, being that we don't have a dedicated dial for the aperture, remember when I showed you that you would hit this plus minus button, you can see that the highlight now jumps to the aperture. I can go ahead and turn that top dial now and it's only going to change the aperture, not going to change the shutter speed. Now in terms of changing ISO, we have a button right here between the display and the focus modes, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit ISO, and you can see, if I turn the dial again, I can change the ISO just like that quickly without really having to go back into the camera. So I select whatever it is that I wanna select, in this case, 800, and I go back into here. Now what's pretty cool is look, you've got white balance. If we hit white balance, we can select the different type of white balance that we would like. In most cases, like I said, I leave it on auto. Next up, we have the AF button. That's for selecting the type of autofocus you wanna shoot with. Currently, it's on AI servo. That's your continuous focus mode, meaning if you hold the shutter button halfway down, it's going to continually focus continually. That's why it's called continuous focus, Jared. Uh, so you would use that for shooting sports or shooting action or airplanes flying, not for subjects that are stationary. Now moving over to AI focus, this is complete auto auto focus. It's going to decide whether it wants to use AI servo 
or one shot, but you're smarter than the camera, so you select which one you wanna use. And then one shot right here, one shot is for if you're shooting a static subject or you're doing a portrait and you wanna focus on somebody's eye because that's the good spot to focus, you would hear the focus beep in this case if you have that enabled. And as long as your finger is pressed halfway down on the shutter button, as long as you leave it there and don't release it, it's going to still have the focus locked to where you last had it locked. So it's up to you to decide where you wanna, which one you wanna use. Now next up, I'm gonna go back to the top of the camera. I'm gonna press this button right here, and this is going to allow me to select the different focus modes. So here, if I press it, Again, or if you touch on the screen, you could touch whichever one you want. You've got your manual selection and then you can select your different focusing points. Press it again, you have a little bit wider and then you move into the large zone followed by auto AF, auto select AF. This means the camera's gonna select the autofocus point that it thinks will be better for you. I don't leave it in that. I either use one of the first two modes and stick with just that. Now down on the bottom is the quick way that you can get into your picture styles like we talked about earlier. I leave that on auto as well. And then moving around the dial, we've got how many frames a second. This is your drive mode. This is if you wanna shoot a single frame every time you press the button. And this is for high speed continuous. For when you hold the button down, it's gonna take picture after picture after picture. And then next, it's gonna do picture after picture, but a little slower. Then this is cool, you've got a self timer mode for 10 seconds, a self timer mode for two seconds, and then a self timer continuous. You could have it shoot up to 10 photos in a row after the self timer goes off. Say you have it set to two seconds, it goes for two, then it's gonna take 10 pictures in a row. Now that's gonna be cool if you're doing some pictures of yourself doing something interesting like dancing or something like that. Uh, so there you have that. Uh, I tend to leave it on high speed continuous unless I know I only want to get one shot. Now that's pretty much all the buttons on the back of the camera for that. Next up, we've got this button up here. This is your live view button. So when I press it, it turns live view on and now you can get a live look at what we're seeing. Now this is live view for just when you're shooting stills. If you wanted to shoot video, you would then move into live view for video just like this and you can see we're now in live view for video. You can touch on the screen to turn off the dual pixel AF to change your shutter speed, to change your aperture and all those different options. But to, to start recording video, you hit this button again. You can see there's a red dot right there and you can see I have 29 minutes and 59 seconds of record time that it will let me do. When I press the button, it starts at zero, which is kind of interesting, and it counts up to 29.59. So there you have that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop and get back into the camera mode because I wanna show you how you review your images. Right here, you have your play button. So I go ahead and I hit play. The first thing that you're gonna see is the video that I just shot. And let me go back, I had a couple of test images, but I wanna show you this one right here. Now you can preview the image and you can see that you have the focus points as we enabled that to show you where you were focused. Now, if you wanna delete this, you would go ahead and hit the trash can once and it's gonna say, do you wanna erase this? You would either hit that with your finger or you could arrow over and hit the set button, but I don't wanna delete it, so I just hit cancel and then you can keep cycling through. Now, if you wanna zoom in on the image, you've got the magnifying glass with the plus button. You can zoom in on it and you can keep going and going and going and see how clear that is. And to zoom out, you go ahead and hit the other button that has the zoom out on it. And if you take that even further, you can see that it gets into uh, an area where you can see all different thumbnails and select the ones that you want. So that's definitely pretty simple right there. Another thing you can do is you can pinch to zoom just like this, give it a second, and it makes it look great. And you can pinch to zoom back out and even pinch again to get the thumbnail view. So you can do that. You can actually swipe through images too. Boom, we swipe through them back and forth. That's actually a pretty cool function. So that's really simple right there. And the one thing I didn't show you yet, info button. If we hit the info, we can toggle through and see that histogram I was talking about on the top right hand side. Uh, there's 
a lot of in-depth information on the internet on how to use the histogram. Generally speaking, if you find a spike right in the middle, that's theoretically where a proper exposure could be, but I'm not gonna get into too much detail about that right now. But it's cool that you can see all of the different settings that you shot with, what ISO you shot with, so you can learn in the future from either your mistakes or your successes. So now I just flicked the switch back into movie mode and some of you guys may have been wondering, well, how do I change my settings for movie mode? And that is a good question. You go into movie mode and then you hit the menu button again and now you're into an entirely new menu system just for when you are shooting videos. So moving into the movie record mode, it is set currently to 24 frames a second. 24 frames a second is gonna give you more of that cinematic look uh, that you're used to when you watch movies or shows that are shot cinematically. Now there's a whole bunch of different settings in here including 60 frames, 30 frames, you see something that says light. I'm a big fan of in this case shooting in standard which is the higher quality that you can get. You can always dumb down the quality but if you shoot in lower quality you can't dumb it back up. So I'm gonna leave it right here set right there. Let's see, we've got sound recording is set to auto, lens aberration, we, we didn't do correction before for stills, we're not gonna do it for video, and then the lens, we're leaving this exactly where it was set as before for the stills. Uh, moving to the second setting, you've got your exposure compensation, I leave that where it is, Auto ISO, now you can set the ISO yourself for shooting video depending on the situation you're in or you could leave it in auto. That of course is up to you. Same thing applies with the max ISO. You could say, I don't want it shooting higher than 12,800. Auto light optimization, I leave that off as well. Moving here. Picture style, when you're shooting video, this is where you wanna set your picture style or leave it in auto if you're just outside generally getting your shots. White balance, auto white balance, custom white balance. Yeah, most of this stuff is pretty normal and pretty simple to just leave it where it's at because the camera does a pretty good job. Now you've got movie servo AF enabled, meaning using an external microphone will reduce the amount of lens drive noise recorded. Yes, that's something that's a good, thank you Canon camera for reminding me to talk about this. Keep in mind, when you are shooting video, and if you have a lens that makes noise in terms of autofocus, the, the, the microphone is gonna pick it up. So you're gonna hear that type of noise. There's really nothing you can do to get rid of that uh, other than getting the STM lenses, which are more silent uh, when you are shooting video and doing autofocus. Let's see, AF method, you've got AF tracking, you have smooth, live 1.0 AF. What's great about the Canon camera is this one has dual pixel AF, meaning if you touch the back of the screen, you can actually have it shift where the focus is gonna be cinematically, but the autofocus is tremendous. It's one of the best autofocuses on the market from any system out there, so you did a good job in picking this one up for shooting video. Uh, meter timer, eight seconds is fine, grid display is off, um, function button, leave that exactly where it's at. Video snapshot, I leave this on disabled as well. Uh, let's see, remote control disabled, and movie digital IS. Right now it's set to enhance. This is a five-way digital image stabilization. It works pretty well, so you could choose, test them out, see which one works best for you. In this case, I'm gonna leave it on enhanced because that's where it was set. And that pretty much takes us through all of the menus all of the settings, what the camera does, and that's pretty much it, guys. I know this is a longer type of video, but if you watch it once, it should help you understand where you should set the camera, in my opinion, but I do recommend that you go out there and test different settings. You decide what works best for you, because what may work for me may not be the best settings for you, and that's why you have all of these controls so that you can take advantage of it. So, I ask you guys to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, and also, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell button so you can be notified when I put new videos live. And I want to thank you again for watching Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.